World War II occurred in 1939 and lasted until 1945. This war involved a lot of powerful countries, including the British Army, the USA and France. Adolf Hitler, a Nazi dictator from Germany, had come to power in 1933. During his time as leader, he successfully brainwashed Germany and its citizens and was gaining more power as he took over more countries. He had to be stopped before he could not be stopped. During his time in power, Hitler unjustly slaughtered people because of reasons such as their beliefs, religion or sexuality. It is hard to put a number on the amount of innocent lives taken during Hitler's rule, but millions upon millions of people were murdered. Upon achieving power, Hitler smashed the nation's democratic institutions and transformed Germany into a war state intent on conquering Europe for the benefit of the so-called Aryan race. His invasion of Poland on September 1st, 1939 triggered the European phase of World War II. One female photographer documented World War II and its horrors. Her name was Margaret Burke White. Margaret Burke White was born in New York City in 1904 and attended the Clarence H. White School of Photography in 1921 to 1922. After graduation, she caught the eye of Henry Luce, who provided her with jobs in magazines such as Fortune and Life. Over the next several years and throughout World War II, Burke White produced a number of photo essays on the turmoil in Europe. She was the only Western photographer to witness the German invasion of Moscow in 1941. She travelled with Patton's army through Germany in 1945 as it liberated several concentration camps and she was the first woman to accompany air corps crews on bombing missions in 1942. She was also the first woman to be allowed to work in combat zones during World War II. In 1941, she travelled to the Soviet Union just as Germany broke its pact of non-aggression. She was the only foreign photographer in Moscow when German forces invaded, taking refuge in the US Embassy. She then captured the ensuing firestorms on camera. With new handheld cameras making it easier for remote photography, world wars were documented through photographs. In a book Burke White wrote after the war, she described what she took with her. Five custom-built speed graphic cameras all of her film, and everything she needed to process the film, and print, which she did using the bath in her room. In total, she had over £600 of camera equipment, including portable lighting. Margaret Burke White's photojournalism demonstrated her singular ability to communicate the intensity of major world events while respecting formal relationships and aesthetic considerations. She was one of the most respected photojournalists in the country during the 1930s and 1940s, and her documentary work was among the most popular of its day. World War II had five main causes. The first cause was the Treaty of Versailles. German combatants had felt betrayed by the signing of the armistice at Copenhagen on the 11th of November 1918, amidst domestic political unrest that was driven by a civilian context of war fatigue and hunger. Some of the high-profile agitators at this time were left-wing Jews, which fuelled the conspiracy theory of a Jewish Bolshevik disloyalty that later gained so much traction as Hitler laid the psychological groundwork in preparing Germany for another war. The devastating experience of the First World War left the victorious nations and their people desperate to avoid a repeat. At the insistence of the French, the terms of the Versailles Treaty were punitive in the extreme and left Germany destitute and its people feeling victimised. Nationalistic Germans were therefore increasingly open to ideas posited by anyone who offered the chance of rectifying the Versailles humiliation. The second cause for World War II was economic downturns. Economic downturn can always be relied upon to create conditions of civil, political and international unrest. Hyperinflation hit Germany hard in 1923-1924. to Defeat in 1918 led to the Kaiser's abdication, a republic and a new constitution. The new Germany faced huge problems, not least those caused by its punishment in the Treaty of Versailles. The way my government's main crisis occurred in 1923 after the Germans missed a reparations payment late in 1922. This set off a chain of events that included occupation, hyperinflation and rebellions. Germany was already suffering from high levels of inflation due to the effects of war and the increasing government debt. Passive resistance meant that whilst the workers were on strike, fewer industrial goods were being produced, 
which weakened the economy still further. In order to pay the striking workers, the government simply printed more money. This flood of money led to hyperinflation. As the more money was printed, the more prices rose. Prices ran out of control. For example, a loaf of bread, which costs 250 marks in January 1923, had risen to 200,000 million marks in November 1923. By autumn 1923, it cost more to print a note than the note was worth. During the crisis, workers were often paid twice per day because prices rose so fast their wages were virtually worthless by lunchtime. This facilitated the early developments of Hitler's career. Although recovery was experienced, the fragility of the Weimar Republic was exposed by the global crash that hit in 1929. The ensuing Great Depression in turn helped to create conditions such as widespread unemployment that facilitated the National Socialist Party's fatal rise to prominence. The third cause for World War II was Nazi ideology and Liebeschwam. Hitler exploited the Treaty of Versailles and the dents in German pride that it and the defeat in war had created by instilling a renewed sense of extreme national pride. This was predicted in part by us and them rhetoric that identified the German nation with Aryan supremacy over all other races, amongst whom particular disdain was reserved for the Slavic, Romani and Jewish Untuschmen. This would have dire consequences throughout the years of Nazi hegemony as they sought a final solution to the Jewish question. As early as 1925, through the publication of Mein Kampf, Hitler had outlined an intention to unite Germans across Europe in a reconstituted territory that included Austria before securing vast tracts of land beyond this new Reich that would ensure self-sufficiency. In May 1939, he explicitly referred to the oncoming war as being bound up with the pursuit of the Liebenschwam to the east, with this referring to the whole of Central Europe and Russia up to the Volga, the fourth cause for World War II was the rise of extremism and the forging of alliances. Europe emerged from World War I a very changed place, with swathes of political ground being taken up by players on the extreme right and left. Stalin was identified by Hitler as a key future adversary, and he was weary of Germany being caught territorially between the Soviet Union in the East and the Bolshevik Spain together with the leftist French government in the West. Thus, he chose to intervene in the Spanish Civil War in order to bolster the right-wing presence in Europe, whilst trialling the effectiveness of his new air force and the Blitzkrieg tactics it could help deliver. During this time, the friendship between Nazi Germany and fascist Italy was strengthened with Mussolini also keen to protect the European right while gaining the first place from which to benefit from German expansionism. Germany and Japan signed the Anti-Comintern Pact in November 1936. The Japanese increasingly distrusted the West following the Wall Street crash and held designs on subjugating China and Manchuria in a manner that echoed Nazi objectives in the east of Europe. Superficially, the most unlikely of diplomatic agreements was established in August 1939, when the Nazi-Soviet Non-Aggression Pact was signed. In this act, the two powers effectively carved up the perceived buffer zone that existed between them in Eastern Europe and paved the way for the German invasion of Poland. The final and fifth cause for World War II was the failure of appeasement. American isolationism was a direct response to the European events of 1914 to 1918, that the US had ultimately become embroiled in. This left Britain and France already terrified by the prospect of another war without a key ally in world diplomacy during the tense interwar period. This is the most commonly highlighted in relation to the Toothless League of Nations, another product of Versailles which patently failed in its mandate to prevent a second global conflict. Through the mid-1930s, the Nazis rearmed Germany in spite of the Treaty of Versailles, and without sanction or protest from Britain or France. The Luftwaffe was founded, naval forces were expanded, and conscription was introduced. With continuing disregard for the treaty, German troops reoccupied the Rhineland in March 1936. Simultaneously, these developments added to Hitler's legend within Germany 
and provided much needed employment whilst encouraging the Fuhrer to push foreign appeasement to the limit. Neville Chamberlain, the British Prime Minister from 1937 to 1940, is the man most closely associated with the appeasement of Nazi Germany. The retributive conditions placed on Germany at Versailles meant that many other potential challengers to Hitler chose to concede the German right to claim the Sudan land and to complete the Anschluss of Austria rather than confront him and risk antagonising war. This attitude resulted in the signing of the Munich Agreement, without question of Hitler's demands, much to his surprise, which Chamberlain infamously celebrated on his return to Britain. An overwhelming preference for peace amongst British and French citizens had continued to prevail in the years prior to 1939. This is highlighted by the brandishing of Churchill and others who warned of Hitler's threat as a warmonger. There was a sea change in public opinion following Hitler's appropriation of the remainder of Czechoslovakia in March 1939, which contemptuously disregarded the Munich Treaty. Chamberlain then guaranteed Polish sovereignty a line in the sand that was forced by the prospect of German domination in Europe. Although many still choose to believe the now inevitable prospect of war was unthinkable, German actions on the 1st of September 1939 signalled the start of a new major conflict in Europe, only 21 years after the final war to end all wars. Margaret Burke White's father was Jewish, but her parents chose to raise their children in her mother's Christian faith. It was a decision that would have a profound impact on Margaret, who struggled with her secret Jewish heritage into adult life. Her father was an engineer and inventor. He was responsible for developments to the rotary press. He introduced Margaret to the world of machines and shared with her his love of the camera, allowing her to help him develop pictures in the family bathtub. It was of little surprise then, when some years later, Burke White produced her first professional series of images of industrial machines. Burke White held numerous firsts in her professional life. She was the first foreign photographer allowed to take pictures of the Soviet industry. She was the first female staff photographer for Life magazine and made its first cover photo. And she was the first woman allowed to work in combat zones in World War II. Working directly with the US Armed Forces, Burke White covered World War II for Life. She spent months on an Air Force base in England, photographing manoeuvres and travelling to London, where she photographed King George, Winston Churchill and Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie. When she learned of secret plans to invade the North African coast, She requested permission to cover the Allied invasion. She got there not by plane, reserved primarily for high-ranking officers, but by boat. While crossing the Atlantic, her transport ship was torpedoed and sunk, but Burke White survived to cover the bitter daily struggle of the Allied infantrymen in the Italian campaign. She then covered the siege of Moscow, which she wrote about in her book, Shooting the Russian War. As bombs rained down, Burke White hid from the wardens, ushering residents to safety, and Burke White managed to make the only photographs of the attack, including the spectacular shot of the Kremlin, illuminated as bombs exploded around it. In 1943, Burke White recorded the war in Italy from the ground. Although she had survived torpedo and artillery attacks, she claimed she was never as frightened as she was on the front in Italy, crawling on the ground with mortar shells and enemy fire whizzing by. She is recognised as having been the first female documentary photographer to be accredited by and work with the US Armed Forces. Toward the end of the war, she crossed the Rhine River into Germany with General George Patton's 3rd Army troops. Her photographs of the emaciated inmates of concentration camps and of the corpses in gas chambers stunned the world. In Germany, Burke White barely recognised the prosperous country she had photographed just a few years earlier. Cities were destroyed and people were defeated. This time, she photographed some of the most horrible scenes of the war. Nazi officials and their families dead by suicide. The liberation of the Weimar concentration camp and a small Nazi work camp where the Jewish prisoners had been set on fire. She distanced herself from the horrors by concentrating on the act of making photographs. It was only when she developed her prints that she acknowledged the horror she had observed. After visiting Birkenwald and documenting the atrocities at the recently liberated concentration camp, she wrote a book called Dear Fatherland, Rest Quietly, to help her come to terms with the brutality she had witnessed. In response to what she saw, she said, Using a camera was almost a relief. It interposed a slight barrier between myself and the horror in front of me. 
one of the most famous photojournalists of all time, Burke White blended the moral values her mother instilled in her, along with her father's love of science and technology, to live one of the most unique and daring lives in recent history. Her love of pictures took her from steel mills to battles abroad, but her continual conflict was to make pictures when and where she wanted. She was a great and tenacious photographer. Her work was her life, and her life was flamboyantly spectacular. To conclude, it was so important for major world wars such as World War II to be documented by photographers such as Margaret Burke White. Photographs capture a moment in time, a reminder of what people have suffered and to help prevent similar events happening in the future.